Three years, three episodes, three chances to find the perfect solution to combat spicy food. And this year, I think we've done it. Tremble in fear, all your restaurants with hot wing challenges. The theorists are going to be coming to dominate your walls of fame. After today's episode, I promise that you'll be equipped to handle nearly anything they can throw at you, no matter how high those chefs crank up the heat. That said, can science actually stand up to the ultimate test? The moment when the hottest thing in spicy food turns cold. Oh no, that was such a small amount. Out. Strap in. Uh, Strap in. Here's the ride. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Food Theory, the only show that tries to be spicy but is actually just a bit bitter. Bitter about never making it onto hot ones, that is. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. If you've been following our spicy saga over the last three years, then you're well aware that I've been recreating my own science based version of the series in an attempt to train up for the day that I'm finally invited to meet my unrequited internet love, Sean Evans. The premise of the show is simple Sean eats spicy wings and does in depth interviews of all the hottest. Hollywood celebrities, and the occasional YouTuber when they need to fill out the guest list. And yet, my attempt to copy him in a legally unenforceable way has been unnoticed. Ignored. I am Hello Neighbor, he is my Matt Pat. So you know what? Who needs him? Today, we ascend. In this, our final part of the Spicy Food Trilogy, we're not limiting ourselves to his show's signature sauce, The Last Dab. No, we're getting hotter. We're going more extreme than the Scoville scale. The final boss of today's episode requires a waiver and passing not just one, but two separate spicy tolerant tests in order to even buy it. It is without question the single spiciest bite of food I've ever consumed. Heck, if you take a bite of this that's the size of a grain of rice, your mouth is gonna be feeling it for the next 20 minutes. This right here, this is the concluding chapter to the trilogy. And there's no better way to go out than to go big. Before we get there though, we gotta come in prepared as possible. And that means another series of spicy solutions that need to be tested. Hopefully you've seen the previous episodes in our quest to find the perfect spice solution, but if not, link is in the top right corner of the description, or I I could just catch you up right now. Overall, we all know the general stuff that you're supposed to do. Drink milk, eat bread, don't drink water, all that sort of good stuff. But I've been convinced that there are better, smarter, more effective science-based solutions out there. I don't just want to cool those flavor flames, I want to extinguish them. And so, using both your suggestions and our research, Steph and I have been putting them to the test. We've seen some good ones, we've seen some bad ones, and we've seen some really bad ones. Basically, <laughs> Negative F, what is wrong with you? In general, we've learned that the perfect spice solutions try to check off as many boxes on this list. They've got to be cold, they got to be sweet, and they got to be thick with as many C's as possible. They're also ideally full of dairy, which contains casein, a protein that's able to dissolve capsaicin, the molecules in food that make it spicy. Lastly, the ideal spice solution is acidic. You see, capsaicin on the pH scale is basic, so counteracting it with something acidic like lemon or lime juice is going to help neutralize the capsaicin that's lingering in your mouth. That right there, that is our list of must-haves. We've also learned to stay far, far away from anything that contains alcohol, which just activates the same trip V1 receptors that capsaicin does in the mouth, irritating them in a very similar way. So far, our top spicy food solutions have been sweet lime simple syrup, a honey peanut butter mixture, and at the top of the heap, a cold custard milkshake specifically from our local ice cream chain, Good Berries. All of them are good, each checking off two or three of the qualities on our list, but none of them are truly great, especially when up against the toughest and spiciest contenders. See also our reactions from last year. We're gonna just try real quick just uh i did this last time too just so we could get a sense of what the flavor of this thing tastes like alone it tastes like fire what do you mean oh. the, the flavor it tastes like charcoal and fire so without further ado it's time for things to get spicy let's set up this test yes my friends this is the final episode in our trilogy of spicy food challenge solution episodes bet your sweet bippy until next year when we decide to reboot the whole thing <laughs> So what are we actually testing here today? Well, we are testing a combination of solutions that you've submitted over the last year. We're also testing a combination of things that we have researched ourselves, like new solutions. There's some returning favorites from past years. Basically, this is the epic Super Smash Brothers crossover episode of all your favorite spicy food solutions. But only one will be able to walk away as the supreme leader of spicy food solutions. Which may be more than I can say for myself. I may not walk away from this episode. I may just keel <laughs> off the chair at some point. Yeah, there will be one winner today and two losers. And those losers are the two of us. Oh yeah. So the layout for this episode is basically the same, but this year with a little bit of a twist. So we have assembled a solution of seven different spicy food solutions that you guys have submitted. We're gonna put them to the test against a base level of spicy wing. And then we're gonna take our favorite of those solutions and put them up against the final boss of this episode, the Hot Ones Last Dab Apollo Sauce. Oh, yeah. But then, my friends, 
there's actually something hotter than that. I'm sorry, Something, I'm... yeah. There's something that's even that... more sinister, even more creative. I like there's how some... I'm not consulted or informed about something that we're having that's hotter than the thing that melted my face off last year. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, man. Oh, yeah. Thanks, it guys. Is, it is hotter. It is more sinister. It throws all sorts of monkey wrenches into the works. And it is something that I've been trying to get Stephanie to test out for years. Oh, no. And so now that she's stuck on camera with me, she's forced to do it with me with all the spicy food solutions available to us. It is oh, I know what this is. You, you figured it out. Sure. <laughs> So join us, friends, as we go about our spicy food journey. Just uh, wish us luck. Prepare yourself, your bowels, and your napkins. Bring out the wings, my friends. Bring out the wings. I am hungry and need to feed. That was weird. <laughs> that was weird. <gasps> Round number one, perfume? Okay, so it's probably best to give this one a bit of explaining. This may sound like a really weird choice, but it's actually coming from a pretty reliable source. Hot Ones themselves, or at least the wider First We Feast team. You see, back in 2020, the team posted on Facebook this video of how sniffing perfume could help you lessen the burn of drinking alcohol. So sniff it, and then take the shot. That you worked! Know, you don't feel it! Obviously, we're eating spicy food and not downing shots, but alcohol activates the same trip V1 receptors that capsaicin does, irritating them in a very similar way. So, if it's good enough for a drink, maybe it's good enough for a spicy wing? Yeah... No. I, 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 don't, I don't see this. There's no way that this one works, right? Because at the end of the day, that this isn't an issue of flavor, right? You're smelling stuff, which is changing your perception of the flavor. There's an actual chemical reaction that's happening in your mouth where pain receptors are being activated. So no amount of smell or perceptual change is gonna affect the fact that this chemical reaction is happening in your tongue. This, there's no chance. Right? I'm, I'm inclined to agree with you, but we've been really surprised on episodes of Food Theory before about things that work and things that don't work. Yeah. And frankly, I gotta lay it on the line here. I have to go into this with some level of optimism because otherwise we have six rounds in front of us and I might not make it. All right, so I, I guess the question is then, are you going with Le Jardin de Monsieur Lee? Or are you going with? Unlabeled bottle that I got several <laughs> years ago. Okay, ready? Ready, dink. What are you doing? What you doing? Quick note, we realized early on that these wings weren't gonna be hot enough to get good data for the test. So we paused and resauced the wings, only to then overshoot the mark and make them a wee bit too spicy. I guess spicier is better than nothing. Anyway, it was time to restart the test with a respray. I was assuming Steph would spray the perfume on her wrist or maybe her chest, but instead she went with the much more unconventional option. <laughs> I, I still, no need to respray though, I smell it. Oh, oh, that was in my eyes. Oh, oh. why? <laughs> why? <laughs> go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is hotter. This is a lot hotter. The perfume okay. is doing nothing except providing a very confusing. Smell experience. my wrist. Smell my wrist. Is it helping? No. Is it helping? Maybe. Maybe. It's very sweet. It distracts me. <coughs> it's worse. It's worse when I'm not smelling your wrist. It, it legitimately is worse when you're not directly smelling the perfume. I can tell you right now the reason <sighs> for this is twofold. One. <sighs> One is it's distracting you from the heat in your mouth. Two, though, the air isn't passing through your mouth. There's there's that impulse to breathe through your mouth. And be like, oh, oh, I want to breathe out the heat. But instead, it's forcing you to breathe through your nose, which actually makes it feel better. Like, talking to you right now is literal agony for me. I hate every word that's coming out of my mouth because I'm literally breathing flames. But when I do this... It, it still burns, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like you still feel it, but it's, it's less sharp. So in terms of like solutions, low, but effective. Yeah. It's not a net negative, it's not nothing, but it's low. So let's move through this. Let's do another one. Yeah, let's go. Round, round two. number two, nose plugs. The general idea here is the same <laughs> as round number one, which is like, hey, if you can't smell what you're eating, is it gonna make it better? Again, I don't think that this is going to do a whole lot because, as we saw with the last round, it's not so much about the smell as it is about where the airflow is going and being distracted from the burning that's happening in your mouth. I actually think this is going to make it work worse because it's going to force us to breathe through our mouth, and that's actually the worst place you could breathe through in this circumstance. You know, I think as we're pursuing uh, new merch uh -huh. options for our uh, fall or even winter launch, oh. I feel the Food Theory nose plug might be a uh, worthwhile endeavor. Boop. All right, here we go. All right. 
Huh. This is weird. Okay. It's, it's not doing anything. It's literally not doing... Like, if you compare our reaction last time... Oh my god, I'm To fine. where we are now, I'm fine. Oh my god, I'm fine. This is insane. There's... This is shocking to me. Here, wait, I'm gonna try another bite. I can't believe this. I'm... I'm not... I'm not supposed to not say anything in these reactions, but... I, I'm actually like speechless. I can't believe this worked. The only place I feel it is all the way in the back of my palate. Right now, I'm feeling it in the back of my throat. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling it like around the edge where I got sauce here. Yeah. But, but the I'm middle not... of my mouth is actually totally yeah, fine. Yeah, my tongue, which is where last round, wow. I was feeling it and I it was, was miserable. Yeah, I it was, was awful. It's, I'm fine. Like wow. I could go back in and do multiple bites of this. This at is this, point. this is not the result I expected at all. This is wild. I'm holding this on here for my own benefit at this point. This is it's, it's game so changing. much less spicy. It's not completely not spicy. No. But we're talking. Yeah. We're functioning normally. I'm not falling off my chair right now. This is amazing. Yeah, I'm not feeling huh. the sort of visceral reaction of like yes. I'm crying right now or like oh my gosh, uh. I'm breathing fire right now. I feel it and I definitely feel it in my like soft palate. Back of my throat, back of everything. Dude, you go into these these episodes, we expect this is zero wild. of these things to work. We expect to be miserable the entire time. This one, this, is this one works. This is unbelievable. Dude, this works. This might be the single most effective solution of any that we've, we've done across had. these three. I can't believe that. I, I, I am dumbfounded by this. I know. This. I, I also, like you, thought that, like, hey, this is a chemical reaction happening in my tongue. Breathing or smelling is not going to affect this, but it totally does. My mouth feels warm. Yeah, I feel it. It doesn't feel like super happy, happy, but I'm fine. Yeah, I could tell that I'm, I would be feeling an uncomfortable amount of spice. Yeah. If I would let myself. Yeah. But the fact that it, for whatever, I don't know, again, if I'm focused on. It's just keeping a lid on it. Yeah, it, it's damping huh. it significantly. So huh. VO Matt Pat, after this episode, after oh. we're done here and all this misery oh, is over with, wow. look this up and tell everyone what the science is here because I don't know, this is blowing my mind. This is incredible. I got your back there, live action Matt Pat. As we're all familiar with at this point, the sensation of flavor is actually a combination of taste and smell. This happens because as you chew, you force air through your nasal passages. These food odors are detected by receptor proteins on hair-like cilia at the top of the sensory cells in your nerves, which then send messages to the brain. And even though it's a chemical reaction taking place on your tongue and not a matter of flavor, the conflicting messages being sent to your brain seem to be enough to override the stimulus of the capsaicin. Now, this isn't something that totally prevents the feeling of spice, but even smelling capsaicin can irritate the mucous membranes in your nose, thereby leading to an increased perception of spice when you eat. So, by plugging our noses, it lessened the overall sensation of the spicy food. We also have some taste buds in the soft palate of our mouths, which explains why I was still feeling some burning back in that area, but when it came to our tongues, the lack of smelling seemed to completely dampen any spicy feelings. Round number three! I'm excited about this one. Key lime pie. This one goes out to Tyler Williams of Tyler and Sophia Nygaard and his love of key lime pie. This was something that was suggested multiple times by you guys, the audience. And the rationale for this one makes a lot of sense, right? In past episodes of this series that we've done, we found that lime simple syrup worked really well because there was something about the citrus and also something about the sweetness that would help dull and kind of lessen the pain that you're feeling in your mouth. Key lime pie actually takes it to another level by introducing dairy and milk is a very common antidote for spicy food. So maybe by getting the lime the sugar and the dairy all in there in the same bite we stand a good chance of fighting off these very intense now things. I, and you've got like a bread substance in here so really this seems pretty darn primed to be like a great solution this should be great a Boop. okay i'm gonna lick the fingers for that extra spice <laughs> you fool oh man doing it again really reinforces how much <laughs> How much the nose flakes did? They did a really good job, man. They're hot. I don't want to put them in there at the same time. I have to finish chewing this. Ah. Uh. Ah. 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 What? Are you kidding me? Are you serious? It disappeared. One thing I didn't think about going into this was there's a fifth thing that this plays into that we didn't think about. 
which is viscosity. When year two, I believe it was, mm -hmm. we discovered that viscosity is something that's thick, like mm. peanut butter, or again, thick like that lime simple syrup oh, yeah, yeah. that's able to linger and kind of permeate everywhere and melt everywhere. It's, it's almost like you want some sort of like salve or gel to deaden the heat and deaden the burning. This has that too. Oh, it everywhere. does come back. It does come back as soon as- It does. You know how they tell you to like smother the flames and put blankets over mm -hmm. it and like tamp it out? This is effectively that. If you're not on the key lime pie train, highly recommend. We were missing out for years. Don't be like us. Ah. Uh. I thought that we had kind of like figured it out and we're like, oh, I guess this is as good as you're gonna get when it comes to spicy food. No. But no, this is great. Yeah. You're to hear first, this delicious viscous discus a key lime pie is in a league of its own. And it makes a lot of sense. It checks all of the boxes that we talked about at the top of the episode. We've got acid from the lime component, sweetness and fat from the graham cracker crust, and the cool temperature of the pie itself provides a soothing sensation. To add on to all of that, it also has condensed milk, which is just boiled down milk with sugar. And on top of that sugar, it also has even more added sugar in the recipe. Sugar, honestly, did us a big favor here. This is because sugar directly works by neutralizing the effects of capsaicin. Some theorize that it's thanks to its ability to suppress the bitter compounds found in capsaicin, but that's just a theory. Oh, boop! We aren't there yet. But needless to say, this and nose plugs are two of the best spice solutions we've ever tried. Round number four! I, I gotta say, I love this episode. Frozen chocolate. I'm feeling really good going into this round. My mouth is not on fire. My lips haven't fallen off yet. I'm so excited, and I don't think chocolate is a bad contender, to tell you the truth. You're not wrong there, Steph. Now, chocolate has a few things going for it. In this case, it's frozen, so we're gonna get a bit of a temperature relief there. It's also sweet and full of fat, both of which are gonna be working wonders on the spice. When it comes to fat, capsaicin's considered lipophilic, which is just a fancy way of saying that it gets absorbed by fat. So the more fat that's stuffed into our chocolate, the better it's gonna be. And since chocolate's essentially just milk and sugar, it also contains small amounts of casein, which is that protein in milk that helps you wash away the oil-based capsaicin molecules floating around your mouth when you eat spicy food. Food. That's why today we're focused on using milk chocolate specifically. I love this episode already. I know. After round one, I'm like, oh no, we have made a horrific mistake by overspicing these wings. But the fact that we're sitting here at round number four and doing fine. We're in it to win it, man. We are Woo! in it to win it. Yes. Haven't even broken a sweat. Man, I love chicken wings so much and I never get to enjoy them on this episode. Ready? I'm there. Double. Ooh, chocolate. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is working five out of 10, I don't know. One Ugh. part of it is definitely from the cold. The other part of it, I'm assuming, is from the, the creaminess of the chocolate. But I will say, it is not dulling the spice nearly as much as the previous rounds. No. As soon as it's out, like it's coming back full force. It's not weakening it at all. Yeah. Woo, all great. right. Huh. Yeah, I'm starting to sweat now. Oh, next round. Let's do it. Round number five. Frozen lemonade milkshake thing. This is, again, my favorite episode of this series. I feel like we have a whole bunch of winners as opposed to last time when it was so clear that we had a ton of losers. By this point last time, we wanted to die. By this time, I, I actually still kind of want to die because we're consuming a lot of dessert very quickly. I still don't feel great, but I feel I feel better than last time. And we've yet to um, eject anything into a bucket next to us, which at this point is, uh, saying a lot. The concept of this one should probably make sense to you at this point, right? It's got ice cream, it's got citrus, it's got dairy in there, and it's cold. But it has a potential to be a step up from the key lime pie in the sense that it's colder. The key lime pie was like sort of generally refrigerator temperature, but this is freezer temperature and colder is almost always better in these situations. One of the things that you keep hearing us say in these first couple rounds, right? It's like, oh, it's in the back of my throat. Oh, it's in the back of my throat. Oh, it's in the back of my throat. This right here, as we did in our brain freeze episode, anything with a straw, is shooting it straight to your back of your throat there, this might be the best solution for that area. Let's do it. Round number five. Bing. It continues. Frozen lemonade dessert drink. How you doing? Mm, tasty. It is super tasty. It's a little icy. It's a little bit less creamy. It is less creamy mm -hmm. than I would have thought. Taking a bite out of a, a pretty structurally sound key lime pie, yeah. it's able to just hang out there until you decide to chew it, right? It's not melting, it's not going away. This, as soon as I get it in, I feel myself having to reapply it. Like I feel like I have to move it around a yeah. bunch because it's constantly melting, turning to liquid and, and running around. This oh. is good. It's definitely our, I would say like second best of the food solutions. Yeah. but. It is not quite up to par 
with the key lime. This one was actually kind of a surprise for us. Highly viscous options have always been the ones top in our charts, so we figured that since lemon juice did really well at neutralizing spice by adding sugar, ice, and everything nice, we'd have ourselves a spicy food killing machine. But instead, we found that the frozen part of the lemonade just didn't cool us down as much as the pie because it just immediately turned into water. And as we all know, water and capsaicin don't mix. So as soon as the soothing sensation of the cold went away, the spice kicked the door back in and washed itself around our mouth and made it right back home in our tongues. Round number six, ketchup. I like that you gave us spoons so we could just take out a big ol' spoonful of ketchup. Wonderful. Let's go. <laughs> oh, this sucks. So, ah, ah, ah. does this make it worse for you? Uh -huh. It makes it worse, right? It's worse. It's okay. worse, it's worse, it's worse, it's worse. This one is uh, just a prank, right guys? It, it has to be. There was no way that this could be used by anybody as a spice solution. At least, no one apart from Shaggy and Scooby. There you go, dude! <laughs> Trying to dull spice using ketchup? It's about the same level of pain that I got from watching Velma. Who would have figured that a movie starring a crime-fighting dog wouldn't adhere to proper scientific principles? Unfortunately, while the acidity of the tomato and vinegar, along with the sweetness of the sugar, should have helped to soothe us, capsaicin is hydrophobic, meaning that it doesn't bind to water-based solutions like ketchup. So all of those ingredients pretty much did diddly squat other than to make us suffer more. What uh. goes up must come down, friendos. And after six rounds, we were flying high for a while, but you knew it wouldn't be a food theory episode without it crashing and burning oh, at some point. we've just been kicked to the basement, friends. That's a rough note to go off of here as we go into the final boss round, which is the last dab, but that's where we're leading to next. I would say ketchup will not be making it into that final round. Speaking of that final round, there's no use putting it off. It's time for the last dab. Final boss time! Right there. We faced this puppy last time, and boy howdy, the smell is back. I'd forgotten the smell. It is literally just like charcoal and ash and death. So in previous years, we've been able to control the amount of last dab that we're actually ingesting. This year, we've got a good, solid slather going on. There's a reason you don't toss the wings in the last dab sauce. It's a last dab, not a last toss. <laughs> I'm sorry. But even though we were facing down a monumental challenge, I wasn't as nervous as I usually am. This time we came prepared with all the heavy hitters. Obviously our winners from year one and two, a lime simple syrup, a peanut butter honey mix, and a peanut butter milkshake from our local ice cream shop, Good Berries. But we also threw in this year's two top contenders, key lime pie, and shocking literally everyone, nose plugs. All right, do you want to add an additional dab to your already tossed wing. Okay. So strap in, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's time to test some spicy food solutions. <laughs> Maybe there's a reason Sean Evans doesn't want us on his show. Okay, there you go. Boop. <sighs> Just like last year, I can't taste the flavor as much this year. There is no flavor. The flavor <laughs> is burning. <laughs> I don't know why this it protects negates, your tongue. It why negates it the whole tongue? front part of your mouth. It's crazy. It's actually nuts. All right, I'm going to go uh, in with the peanut butter milkshake now. But <sighs> I am actually shockingly fine just from this alone. I could go into any of these right now to cool a little bit of what's happening here. I'm actually going to take this off to give these other ones a fair test. Wow, it just comes back. It's so weird. It? Give it a sec, and it pushes forward slowly across your tongue. Oh, that is so It is bizarre. so weird. That is so weird. Why does that work? It's so much hotter. It's so much hotter. <sighs> yep. So <sighs> now that I've done them, this <sighs> fine, but this was year one. We've eh. grown. Yeah, this is fine. We this evolved. is mid. This is mid. This is solid. This is top tier. Key lime pie. Mmm. <sighs> That's a really nice job. It does a real good job. Mm -hmm. So this is better because it's a little bit colder. This is better because it's not liquid, and so it's able to sit on the heat, and again, acting like a blanket, basically tamping out or smothering out the fire that's mm -hmm. going on in your mouth. At this point, I feel really good about being able to handle the spicy food here. I know exactly where to go for an antidote, and for, for little spice babies like me, that's crucial. And again, remember, this is a wing tossed in this stuff. Yeah. And then with an additional, you had like two dabs. Uh -huh. I had five oh. on mine. And last year, it won't stop, Steph. I know, I know it's really It bad. won't stop. 
It's really bad. We're weeping. The only reason we're feeling spice now, or at least the bulk of the spice, is because we took this off. So this plus these other ones, you're golden. It took us yes! three years. <laughs> but I think we finally dialed in the optimal solution here. You ain't got nothing, Apollo Sauce. Get out of here. Get, you have done your last dab. So we've bested the final boss here, but there is another one that's lurking in the wings. Was that, one, a, was that a pun? In the wings? Oh! So there is okay. one food okay. Okay. that Stephanie and I have bonded over huh. since the very beginning of our relationship. So for those of you who don't know, Stephanie grew up in a town that has one stoplight and not a whole lot happens there. But there is one thing it has going for it, which is the world's best ice cream shop. People come from like 50 miles around to go to this ice cream shop, which is called Sunny Skies. It's run by a guy who has two kids named Sunny and Skylar. Yeah, it's that cute. And they're the home of the world's like first famous spice cream. One shop has created a bizarre new flavor designed to warm you up. It's known as cold sweat, and it is rumored to be one of the spiciest sweets on the planet. This spice cream is made with three kinds of chili peppers and two of the hottest hot sauces known to man. This is basically a bucket of fire right here. The ice cream base itself is seasoned with even more hot sauces. Half an hour in the batch freezer turns our fire to ice, and it is about to get hotter. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing cold sweat. This stuff is so intense, you have to sign a waiver in order to even taste test it. They won't let you buy a scoop of it until you have fully taste tested it and come through and been like, yeah, I actually want a scoop of that. There are actually three layers of protection around this stuff, right? First off, you gotta sign the waiver, say, all right, I'm on board. Secondly, they give you what's called the grain of rice test, where they literally give you a piece the size of a grain of rice. And you would think, oh, pff, it's a grain of rice, what's the big deal? It will linger in your mouth for no less than 15 to 25 minutes. I went to the store the other day to get this in preparation for this, this test. Yeah. And I'm like, please don't make me actually do the final test, which is the three pepper test. They give you a spoonful with all three peppers present and you gotta take it. But at this point, we've done last dab, we've done all these spice solutions. I feel like I should be better. I did the rice the other day, the grain of rice size, just to buy this. And I'm like, oh no, this is just as hot as I remembered it. They actually came up with a new flavor that's even a level above this called Exit Wound, which I think honestly is a fun name, but not nearly as fun as what I would have called it, Freezer Burn. Matthew's been saying this for years. I do, I agree, it's a missed opportunity. <sighs> I'll do the three pepper thing. Oh wow, you just, you just did it, good for you. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh. oh no! <gasps> so that what? was such a small amount. So not only <sighs> is this incredibly hot and incredibly spicy, oh man, <sighs> from a textural standpoint, <sighs> it sucks because it's frozen peppers, and frozen peppers are just nasty. <gasps> okay. Okay. Nope. I'm feeling okay. 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 I'm banning that. <sighs> oh, and there it comes. I thought <sighs> that years of me doing spicy food challenges. <sighs> would make me like, oh yeah, this is nothing. This is, I clearly overestimated this when I was younger. Nope. While any of these are in your mouth, they really do help. Mm -hmm. They really, really no, no, no. do. Mm -hmm. The problem with this ice cream, and I don't know exactly what it is or how they've gotten it to this level of potency, but every time anyone we know has tried even a little bit, they say that it lasts. And that's the problem. It just becomes relentless. And it doesn't like last in just like, a, oh, it's a little tickle in the back of your throat. My throat is burning. So there you have it, friends. If you truly want like a one of a kind, unbeatable, weirdly hot experience, cold sweat or exit wound from Andrew, North Carolina, of all things, that is a, a flavor experience that you're never gonna replicate. Thanks there, live action Matt Pat. I'll take it from here. And with that, we're finally able to finish our tier list. Our top tier pick from before, Milkshake, is now bested by the absolute outstanding Key Lime Pie. In the A tier, we have Peanut Butter and Honey. Our B tier is a whole lot of citrus with frozen lemonade, lime syrup, lemon juice, sugar water, and ice cubes. Our C, D, and E tiers have stayed relatively the same, except with the addition of perfume in D. And the worst things to ever use as spice chasers rounding off the list are vodka, mouthwash, wash and ketchup. Seriously, I'd rather guzzle the last dab than try any one of those again. I'd rather bathe in cold sweat. And I don't even know if I'm talking about the ice cream or the bodily fluid, but of them all, one unexpected solution reigns supreme. In a league all of its own, nose plugs. A solution that is so powerful that it silenced the all-powerful last dab sauce. It may not be glamorous wearing nose plugs in a restaurant, but I ask you, what looks less dignified? This or this? Wait a minute, Stephanie, what if we do cold ones 
cold ice creams, even colder, harder truths. Sean Evans, you're my Mr. Incredible, and I am your syndrome. Cold ones coming to a food theory channel soon. <laughs> So there you have it folks, over the course of these three episodes we've tested over 20 different spice solutions. And now we are done. No more, nuh -uh. My stomach ain't taking this anymore, I'm not doing this again. Until of course it gets the inevitable reboot next year, like all good trilogies do. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. And hey, have you ever wondered if all this extreme spicy food can kill you? Well, I looked into it and that answer is on screen right now. Click the video on the left if you're interested in spicing up your life. Or if you're interested in just how far smell can affect your sense of flavor, that video's on the right. We did a really fascinating experiment for that one. And with that, my friends, I'm off to uh, have a very unpleasant trip to the bathroom. I will see you next week if I make it.